Hello, Coach VH here, and um, this video is not much special. Um, it really only exists for the same reason that the re recording of Black Mesa East exists. This is a re recording of the last map from the Ravenholm chapter of the game. And I decided to start off in the mines to you know, give it a mo bit more of an organic feel. Basically, I just went through the game again and um, I basically no clip to the end of Ravenholm just to get to this map. I, uh, I did a little bit of editing just to make sure that the video didn't have like too many abrupt stops or went on too long. Anyway, like I said, the purpose of this video is to serve the same purpose of the uh, Black Mesa East one, and this is to really just show you what this part of the game is supposed to look like. Because it really it looks really bad in Fulbright. The idea with Ravenholm is that it happens in at, at night time, and you can't really tell. And this map's supposed to happen in the morning, but because of Fulbright, you can't really tell. Black Mesa East was also supposed to take place during sunset and nighttime too, actually. Which is what I was referring to when I said you couldn't tell. Because Ravenholm, we restarted the game for that. Because that would have been awful in Fulbright, as Brett mentioned. Now the other reason I wanted to make this is because I wanted to discuss like a little bit about HDR and Fulbright. Um, maybe explain some technical bits about the Source Engine that you may or may not have known. Anyway, so uh, what happens is the Source Engine renders maps in a way that the uh, lighting is uh, like a normal part of the map. Like it's all it's always in Fulbright unless you have the right kind of entities in the map to provide lighting. So basically, shadows naturally do not happen in the Source Engine. You have to have a light environment entity for that to happen, at least in this version of the engine. I'm not sure what later versions, how later versions work. I haven't used the newer versions of Hammer. Um, but I can't imagine they'd be too different. Anyway, so what HDR is, is HDR is a sort of kind of lighting trick with the map, where basically all it does for the map is go through the lighting bit of the processing twice and the reason it does that is that it goes through a sort of low light processing and a high and a high light processing mode the reason it does that is so it can change the way it looks in game when you're in a darker part of the map it kind of brightens up and when you're in a brighter part of the map it kind of darkens down a bit the reason it does this is to try and sort of kind of imitate the way your eyes adjust to light um, if you've ever played uh, Half-Life 2 Lost Coast, then you know that's why it's there, since Lost Coast was... All it really was was a demonstration of that kind of uh, technology that they used in Half-Life 2 Episode 1 and Half-Life 2 Episode 2, since that's where it first showed up. The problem with using HDR, though, sometimes, because it messes up the cube maps sometimes, uh, depending on, you know, how good of a mapper you are. If you're a shit mapper, it might make a map look really bad. Um, and if you don't know what cube maps are, cube maps are basically a thing in the map, like an entity that basically controls reflections. It makes how light reflections on certain surfaces of, the, of uh, textures and maps look. Usually for water or metal objects to reflect like the sky box. That's really all. And maybe other things around it. I never really got a good grasp on cube maps, so I never really used them. I never really used water much either, so it was never really a problem. But now I'm talking about my own mapping and that wasn't really the point of this. But uh, this was the whole HDR and lighting thing I wanted to say for this video. Basically, the source engine processes light in that way. So, 
if you don't have a lighting entity in there, um, it doesn't matter what you put in there, you're not going to have the right kind of light, you're not going to have shadows, you're not going to have anything, everything's going to be in full bright. So that was like the big problem, is because it was just in full bright, because these maps during these updates were optimized to have HDR, and by turning off HDR, it, you're basically turning the lighting off, which is why it end up, ends up rendering in full bright. Anyway, that's all I really have to say for uh, this video. Uh, you can continue watching and get some of the dialogue that you may or may not have missed from me and Brett's commentary and both of us going moan and reading moan. I'm talking about Eric. But uh, see you guys next time. And um, Alex, it's Leon. Well, yeah, I've got see you guys Gordon Freeman with me. Gordon, you made it through Ravenholm. Thank God. I need your help. They've taken my father. He's been taken to Nova Prospect. The border gongs tracked the ship that made off with him and Judith Mossman. While the trains are still running, I'm going to hitch a ride. Here's where you come in, Gordon. I need you to make your way along the coast until you get to Nova Prospect. It used to be a high-security prison. It's something much worse than that now. But I think it's still easier to sneak in than to break out. You wanted to take the coast road? You won't last five minutes on foot. It's spawning season for the antlions. That's why I called you, Leon. I was hoping you still had the scout car we left with you last summer. The one my dad rigged with the towel can. Yeah, good idea. Hold on a sec. Narco? Bring the buggy out. Put it on the dock right now. Gordon Freeman will be driving it. Will do. I just finished mounting an ammo crate on the back. Good timing. Okay, Alex, we're all set. <sighs> Thanks, Leon. Gordon, I haven't driven the coast in over a year, but I have no reason to think it's gotten any safer. Meet me in the depot where the trains unload. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you in Nova Prospect. Bye for now. Bye, Alex. Okay, Doc, before you hit the road, you might want to grab some med kits, uh, restock on ammo, maybe check the map, see where you're headed. There's an ammo supply crate on the back of the car, if that's any comfort. Stay with the car, make use of the thumpers, you'll stand a fair chance against the ant lines. I'll radio ahead to let the next base know you're coming. Beach.